I just think that it's so problematic that there's so little support for people who want to taper off of psychiatric drugs. And I appreciate that you offer some insight about that and some more resources about that in your book. So I, I encourage people to visit your website because there are obviously growing numbers of people who are like, wait a minute, no one ever told me that this was going to be this addictive and that there were going to be this many adverse effects and that I was going to be this dependent on it. I want to get off. But then I can't find anyone who's actually capable of guiding me through that. So, you know, I, I think you are someone who is capable of guiding people through that. And I appreciate how real you are by saying that, yeah, you're going to enter a dark night of the soul. It's, it's going to be difficult. And that in itself, just kind of knowing that ahead of time is already, already makes it less scary, I think. Um, and, you know, it, I, I always think that one of the most important messages anyone could ever receive when they're experiencing difficult emotions is that it's not only will it change, but it's changing as we speak. Mm -hmm. And so this process, it is unfolding. You're already falling up. As you say, you're already moving through. So it's not even like it will pass. It is passing. Mm -hmm. So that I think is important for people to remember. And, you know, I'm also, I've said this on other podcast episodes, but I'll say it now that I, like I mentioned, work with people with severe drug addictions to you know, drugs that actually are not that very, not that different from prescription drugs, just uppers and downers. Mm -hmm. And when they are uh, forced to withdraw, there's very little sympathy that they get. There's mm -hmm. no guidance. It's just like, sometimes they do it in jail. Sometimes, I mean, usually it's in jail because that's, that's when they're forced to, to withdraw and they go through the hell of like heroin withdrawal and they have all the detoxifying processes that their body undergoes which are unpleasant so the diarrhea the vomiting the fever the shivers the kicks where your legs are super antsy but there's just an interesting difference between how they just handle it they just go through it it's part of the culture of the people i get to know in the jail who are in the kind of um underground drug world not mainstream drug world but then but then when someone's like, I think I might want to get off of Prozac, everyone's like, hold on, you can't just stop taking the drug. And it's like the contrast is so stark, you know, and just because the population of people who are drug addicts in jail, they're not really, um, let's just say, given the same level of care and caution about how they conduct their life. We just say, all right, yeah kick heroin, get sober, and we'll let you out of jail once you're sober. But then again, we have people who are dealing with prescribed drugs. And it's just this kind of it, it. I mean, people are made to believe that you can't, you just shouldn't, maybe you can lower the dose, but you shouldn't get off. So I'm, I know I'm saying a lot right now, but I just want to point that out and, and just say to people that you're a good resource. Dr. Brogan's a great resource if you want to taper off your psychiatric drugs. And I'm sorry to people that there are not more resources available um, to do that in, in the right way. I'll also reference my conversation with Dr. Joanna Moncrief. She goes into it in our conversation and she's written about it as well. She's a psychiatrist as well. So anyway, there's, there's all that. And I wish we had more time to get into it, but I just wanted to mention it and then ask you, two last questions if you have a few more minutes mm -hmm. and i can say something quick about that too okay yeah I'll... please do please do. okay i'll just say yeah because it's i mean we could obviously do a whole uh, show yeah. on this topic and and my perspective has evolved pretty considerably you know because you said you should expect a dark night of the soul that is my bias right mm -hmm. i never treated uh you know the folks who stopped 20 years of, of Zoloft on a Wednesday and went on to live their lives. I never saw those folks. I'm mm. sure that they exist. Right. True. Because even in what we are calling the biophysiologic realm of detox and withdrawal and discontinuation syndrome, as you euphemistically refer to in the literature, um, even in this realm, there is personal meaning. Right. So what I have found is that whether you're talking about the heroin detox or whether you're talking about, you know, the, the risperol um, taper, 
that, first of all, I've come to understand that the psychiatric medications are, are, are by a long shot, the most habit forming chemicals on the planet. I mean, I, most people who have any experience in the taper and withdrawal realm uh, when it comes to psychotropics, I mean, it, it's, it's not even in the same universe of, you know, a five day alcohol detox or oxycodone, you know, withdrawal or whatever you might say. So that being said, there is, there is an initiation, right? When you talk about kind of what street drug, um, so-called addicts go through when they withdraw, it's, it's scary. It could be deadly and it is a psychic hell. It's a psychic confrontation with something that can feel worse than death, right? Because it may actually represent the death of an old self um, that is no longer welcome, right? That's no longer serving, that no longer fits. And this initiation is a part of the process of what it is to then be someone who lives not just without these drugs, but who has no need for them. There's not even a relevance for them in your new world. To get from that world to this one, you got to cross a bridge. Mm. And it's, you know, it's not meant to be as a chopper. It's not meant to be like a somnolent kind of waltz, mm. you know, through the meadow. It's designed to be this way. So that's why, you know, the caveat I, I want to offer is like, that's why the protocol that I have become very attached to, you know, that's Vital Mind Reset Online or in the book or whatever. That's why you prepare for an initiation, right? If you were in an indigenous tribe, you would prepare for that vision quest for a while, right? There's a psychological, emotional preparation. There's physical preparation. There's support, um, you know, from elders and others who have already um, traversed these spaces. And so that preparatory ritual, if you will, of, of this protocol may be what is, is required to you know, sort of set the foundation for the work that you will do. And I love what you said about kind of essentially emotional alchemy, right? That because we're not, you know, as kids, what are we told? Stop crying, you know, no, oh, have this lollipop. It's okay. It's okay. You know, all that we're conditioned around is bad feelings are bad. Stop feeling them, make them go away, fix it. And so we stuff them and we have no capacity psychologically, emotionally, physically to hold these states of energy mm. with no intimacy with them familiarity. What's going to happen if I feel this level of terror, am I going to die? That's what it feels like. Right. So to get in touch with the yes, right. To get in touch with the desire beneath every so-called negative emotion is a deep longing, right. It, that is unfulfilled. So how can you begin to start to identify and align with those desires that you have for your life? Because you get to build your life, mm. and build your life based on intimacy with your needs and with your wants. And then you start to learn how to ask for those things and to create the conditions for those to manifest in your lived experience. And you're in charge of that. That's the good news and the bad news, right? <laughs> is that you're in control of that. And, you know, that is, is reparenting in, in its yes. essence, right? It's, it's um, offering to yourself what you weren't offered as a child because your parents weren't offered it, offered it as, as children themselves. Mm -hmm. And so this, this process of coming off of medication, I think actually now, you know, because the collective evolution around this relative to when I first started in this, um, this field and dedicated my practice, you know, in 2010 to medication tapers, um, without ever, ever starting a patient on medication again. So that's a, was a unique aspect of my practice. Um, I do think it's evolving. Yeah. I'm not so sure you need an expert. I'm not so sure you need tons of resources. Mm. Yes. Would it be helpful to read, you know, my book and to orient yourself to other resources out there and other stories of success and all the rest? Yes, absolutely. Feed that field of your empowerment. Um, and I kind of feel like if you want it, you'll have it. Mm. You'll figure it out. You'll mm. draw to yourself whatever it is that you need to walk this path. And I don't know, again, that the field really existed to hold that kind of self-sovereign uh, experience the way that it does now. 
even five years ago. So it's a really exciting, exciting time for personal liberation and mm. the experience of self-discovery and all that is reclaimed um, through that journey.